Just to address a little issue about the influences of music. Yes, I just star, my Lord and the rebel. The eye is right. So a full time now why not brothers and sisters stop telling lie to ourselves. We being products and the users of this element music to the quartered stage of dancehall music of what they call it and its great influences and the impact that it has on our african nation in the caribbean in this diaspora also throughout in the americas and in on the uh, the continent of africa itself i love wise its continuum of influences that it has on every other nation that take part in the well-being of reggae music. Overall, within the medium of music, all genres of music has influences, has its impact on which it's bearing its own weight and reckoning and to any relative logical situation that come about. That the everyday average norm in the commonality of citizens and people, their well-being of livelihood, would always be able to relate to the common and neutral grounds, neutral or mutual grounds, either way, either way, ones would be able to relate and convey that desire or that strength or that concern through music where they are presently in their life. So yes, our brothers and sisters behind the scenes of dancehall music need to stop lying. How many years over and over that artists have sung songs by which it is only a line of rhyme and not truth, but hearsay and makeup. So many sing of wealth that they wish to possess that they do not have and have never yet gotten, but to influence the world by an imagination and a vast wide imagination that things are done in this manner but yet your demeanor and the character in which you portray yourself is as if you've gotten it and you have it and you're living that lie but you gave me three verses on a three and a half minute track of lies and over the years I, the people, the citizens, the individual, continue 
and were and still are giving support to artists and artists who so by live by this lie and we buy your records your cds and you get to where you are grammy nominations billboard charts number one top tens and yet we as the artists gonna turn around to say that the music that we do the message that we give the content that is entailed in every song does not have influences or impact on people's life as they go about every day when a person is in a mad and sad and a really bad mood whatsoever the circumstance of the situation is whatsoever that they have encountered the outcome at the end of the day what would give them solace and make them feel good within themselves is to play a song that is befitting for their moment and how much time this is not no makeup or may I try to give no imagination or try to come with no philosophical theory I'm talking logical and realistical events that surrounds us and whether we feel that whether if we feel that we, we do not take part in these things intentionally or unintentionally direct or indirectly we all play a part because we either listen or we either sing we either say or we either accompany somebody else who is doing the singing or the saying or the dancing to all these music all these songs so none of us is out of it because we are partakers of it from reggae to ska to hip-hop to r&b to dancehall to classical you name it to rock to heavy metal all these fusions of music all these proportions so a full time now for i and i even reggae artists and them stop tell that lie stop do interviews where they're telling these lies stop doing these interviews telling you know to the interviewer giving a perception as if you're all in a seat and all is corralled right and nothing is going on wrong the major impact from these influences when people get pumped up in attitude then put on the song that's gonna fit them whether if it's a don't or whether if it's a white cartel or whether if it's a bounty killer or whether if it's a keep rich or merciless any one of these artists down the line that sing all these songs so me talk specifically now so me let me deal with that specific so we need to define so specifically certain type of lyrics so in that reality they want to tell you say well this is how the ghetto is so them only singing the reality of the ghetto so we understand you sing the reality of the ghetto but many of you artists you cannot read and many of you artists cannot write reading is very important and enough of you all lock yourself and limit yourself because you all do not love to read and because you finished your last entry in school and now you're out in the world where you can work and earn money and maybe you got that chance because you got into music from an early age so it gave you that break to make money but how much of you all continue after you gotten that break to further edify yourself to further learn be a learned person with information so that we can no longer be ignorant and stay in that ignorant forum how much of us you know get ourselves knowledgeable so the next time that when we write our songs also by the next time we'll be able to write our own songs and we wouldn't be dependent on the writers targeted artists per song because they might write a specific particular noted kind of song so it's not any and any artist can sing this song so within the targeted reached for every artist 
The writers who write these songs for these artists who can't write, who can't read, but they're able to sing a song that was written and given to them. The songwriters are writing with the projection per se, per, for each artist. So if me know that Bounty Killer or Merciless or Kiprich or whosoever which one sings and, and them can re-agitate themselves or, or, or regurgitate themselves or, or be profound in a lyrical sound of certain words because them give off that energy as gunman lyrics, then me the writer is going to write for those kind of artists specifically. Those going to be my targets. Now, how much of these artists, when them get a written song that has been presented for them to sing, how much of them can comprehend the composition that is presented before them, that after they read this composition, that the thorough understanding is there that them can go so and reject or either say, um, give thanks for this song, but for the kind of artist that I am and I am not love this kind of song. So I man won't be singing these kind of songs. How much of those artists are able to say that for themselves independently, a choice without them have to go further indulging themselves because them just get a song from a songwriter. But here we are, overall, them don't know the essence or the full essence of the song. It's only when them don't sing the song and when they are being booked for a show for some of these particular songs. That is when these artists are then practicing and learning the lyrics of these songs. I am not making this up. Go listen to the interviews. A greater percentage of these artists who sing these songs, they don't know these songs out of their heart because they get, they get the lyrics and the songs and they sing them right there. They don't know themselves about the song. That's it. It's done. It's only when time for performance and that contract is asking for them to deliver the package. Within the package, they want a certain criteria and they want a certain kind of songs. So then the artist and them, at that time, they're going to ban house, go practice these songs that they sang and recorded. They don't know these songs. It's only then they're going to practice and sing these songs to get known to these songs. So thereby, it's only that would be the more time that they will get into themselves to understand the songs that they're singing. So it's easy for them to turn around and say and to tell the world in interviews and so on, listen, our music, this is the alpha and this is how we do it, but our music not really incite violence. How could you say your music does not incite violence when your music itself is violence? Your music already have incited violence because the lyrical content is violence. So if the lyrical content is violence, it's already incited the violence. So the damage is already done. So all this naiveness and the, this denial from all these artists, top artists, whether if you want to call them top artists, the whole of them, you can call many of them names. Because over the years, this is how them started and their records are still there. That's the thing about record. It's recorded. So it's there. So DJs from all over the world still can play these songs. How much of them are willing to go to the record companies or stand up with a stand and say, listen, all these songs that I've sung that have these lyrical contents that is going against life and giving a bad influence to every other youth or to any connected generation before us, we want those music to cease. We want them stop. We don't want them play again. So we don't want royalties from them. How much artists is willing, yet with all the other songs that they sing about care for the world and unite and come together and for the better, how much of them are willing to say that they don't want the royalties from these songs? that incite violence. So we need to stop. So all these songs that you see you have with me, with violence, inciting violence, and those lyrical contents, I don't want them to be played anymore. How much artist is willing to chop their hand and do that? From Sizzler to Bounty Killer, yeah? 
to be in a man, to keep rich, you name them, to merciless, to Adonai, Adonia, yeah, you name them to the whole of them, all of them, and all the sound man them, and all the radio disc jockeys, and all the sound selectors of them, how much of them are willing to say, because the whole of them have women, the whole of them been introduced to vagina, the whole of them have been having, having sex. The way I'm going with this because the whole of them have children. A lot of them have more children than me. None of them have boy children. And none of them have girl children. And the influences is leading I and I, all of us, in a state which is not good for us. It is not benefiting us. Benefiting us. It's just several years ago when YouTube finally put a lockdown with rules and regulations on what should be seen and what should be considered as appropriate being shown within on their station. But there was a period of time before those several years when dancehall music went to the extreme. So you could have find any kind of videos on YouTube. And the video, those videos that was being displayed on YouTube it was at the height, the zenith point of where we took this vulgarism within ourselves and the dancehall music. Because people started dancing naked in sessions, in dancehall sessions when they had events. Man and woman started having sex, physical sex, naked physical sex. Matter about sex. Man penis in a woman vagina having sex while a crowd of people around them watching them and dancehall music being played and with the specific kind of sexual dancehall music that's have been that was being played by the artists and them who sing those specific kind of sexual arousing dancehall music that would give alliance to having ones and ones would be adhering to that particular kind of lyrics. So they them themselves in time can act out these lyrics in a dance hall because we the people who consume this dance hall music gave it space. We gave it space for a certain type of lyrics can be added in the criteria of these contents. We gave it space for acceptance for these kind of lyrics that is coming from the artists and with this kind of vigor. We also gave it space for acceptance while we are in the dance hall, while it's being plain and while it's being portraying this particular kind of lifestyle that we adopt to this particular lifestyle. So then we started acting and living this kind of lifestyle. No artist can come and tell me you nothing and tell me my talk stupidness and my talk wrong. Me know exactly what I am saying. Me attack the truth. So who no want to adhere with me? It's all up to you, it's all fine. I might not have a, a name in the world being famous artist. So me not a top celebrity and top artist. Me no business and care about that. The fundamental main focus is that I am an artist. As an, an, as an artist, I have to defend this. I have to, at some point, make my voice be heard. So I have to say what I need to say. Because if all of we are brothers and sisters within this art form of music, then I cannot be a hypocrite. One time, the influence had taken, con taken control of I when I was a young youth learning this art form. Growing up in my village in Trench Town, when we see all these elder artists before I and I singing these songs. So first the man started out rhyming. And when I man write, I man second song. My second song was a vulgar song. Very vulgar. That when I left from down by my grandmother's house and went up by my cousin David in David's shop. And when I hold the mic and start singing that song for the very first time, 
my conscious awareness, even while I was singing that song, was hurting and digging and yumming me out. By the time I finished the last verse of that song, the shame would be become upon me. Because, me I tell you, all these artists out here will write all these vile songs. <laughs> Boy, I man can write viler. And in terms of vile, if I don't, if I don't done the part that we want to go, then any and every artist can write the most wickedest and the most vilest of songs. But what will it do for us in the end? He not do nothing good for us. He going to do something for us. But is it good? He not do nothing good. So my brothers and sisters, after that encounter, I could have never lift that song up and sing it again. And the funniest thing about that song, me try me at the most best to always forget those lyrics and forget that song. But because I write it and I selected it myself and I saw the story and I placed it together. And now presently from so many years ago, 